and welcome back to DMG. Today I'm going to be disassembling some coffee and drinking some external hard drives. So, let's get right into it. External hard drives are a pretty mundane thing. They are becoming a little less common with the capacity of thumb drives and external SSDs rising and the cost dropping for pretty much anything below the terabyte range, it's a lot more sensible to get a solid state solution. But these drives are still around, and they're not actually as complex as you might think. All external hard drives are pretty much built like these two. You've got a USB port here, and you've got a light up here, and the brand name slapped somewhere on it. Maybe a nice design like this one has they're really not too interesting on the outside, and on the inside, what makes them so interesting is how mundane they are. You see, there's no special drive in here. This isn't, like, the lid of the drive. Most of these, you'll open them up and find this. This is a Seagate mobile hard disk drive attached to a SATA to USB adapter. Now this is an actual Seagate drive. This is not just like something I built. If you go out and buy a Seagate external drive, this is what you get. Now if we look at this board here, it is simply designed and that is great. You've got your SATA connector, your USB connector, here's your bridge chip, and you know, to actually convert between the two standards. And then, let's see, where would the light be? There's an LED light somewhere on the board that, you know, is the one that you can see from there. Those are pretty easy to peel open, and there's actually kind of like a, a life hack, I suppose. Sometimes these external drives go on sale for cheaper than the actual hard drives inside them. So you can buy one of these external drives for like $20 cheaper than the actual drive inside, crack it open, get a free uh, SATA to USB adapter, and a hard drive at a lower cost. Now technically these are white label drives, uh, they're official Seagate white label drives. Not just because the label is white, I've explained what that means in the past, they're lower bin than, you know, one that would be sold on store shelves oftentimes. And I wouldn't quite recommend this lineup of Seagate drives. The label is actually the seal, so if you peel that off, it can, it can cause many issues. They're just not super well built. This was never even going to be a video. This was just me cracking open the Seagate drive because I knew I could sell this drive for more than it would sell if it was in this external enclosure. So that was just the plan. But then I thought maybe I should talk about it. So that is exactly what I'm going to do for a little bit. This enclosure could technically fit a taller height drive because the SATA connector plugs in up here and then the drive doesn't go all the way to the bottom of this board or the case. You could fit a full 9.5 millimeter drive this is just a 7mm drive, so I wonder why they haven't updated their designs to make the case slimmer, because that's something people like nowadays. But anyway, I wasn't going to make a video on just this one drive, because that wouldn't have been interesting enough. There was something that really made me want to talk about these drives, and that was this Toshiba one right here. Now this is one that I personally owned. Uh, I don't use it too much anymore now that I have, you know, 3.5 inch hard drives and, uh, you know, big eSATA docks that can transfer, at, you know, twice the speed this thing can. So I don't really use it much anymore. So I was thinking, what if I can pull the drive out and sell it? So I cracked the drive open, pretty easy, and guess what I find? It's a hard drive. It's got that USB connector. But let's look at the back of it. And let's look at the back of it. There we go. It's not a board like this. 
it's a custom controller board that actually just has this connector soldered on. So I did a little bit more research, and it, it turns out this is just an off-the-shelf drive, but it's got that custom controller board, and you can actually buy a SATA board to put back on this drive. I mean, look, at, in the end of the drive, you can't really see it, but it has the cutout, yeah, right here, for where the SATA connector would fit if it were a SATA drive. Now, I'm not going to mess with that, I'm just going to put it back in the box of shame and, uh, you know, deal with it. But it's got everything it needs for the external drive on this board. This little plastic piece that shows the drive activity indicator LED, there's LEDs on the board for that. So it's really interesting how they've done this. And this is a slightly taller drive than the Seagate one, but they've, they've made the enclosure a lot smaller to fit around it. Can this box actually fit? It can almost fit inside the Seagate drive. You see, it's not as long as the Seagate one because it doesn't need this board. Now, I would prefer if it had that board because it would be easier to mod, and I like that. But I will acknowledge that most users could not care less. Also, it's not screwed in, it's not secured, it's not glued in. There's nothing actually holding the drive in. The thing just snaps closed and then <laughs> there's your drive. It's a bit of a weird design in that regard. I would expect there to be something more securing this drive. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. As always, I have a ton of other hard drive related content on the channel if you want to go check it out. And if you're especially interested in vintage hardware, I have some vintage hard drive videos coming up that I'm planning. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thank you everyone for watching, and see you next time.